Well, good morning and welcome to City Line. Happy November 1st. Boy, did October just fly by. We are live every Thursday morning, and this Thursday morning we have a great show ahead of us. Later on in the hour, we'll be talking with Scott from the LeMay Museum about some of the fabulous cars that they have there. Um, we were there back in 2012 when they first opened, and I have never forgot all the fabulous cars that I got to see. So um, Scott will give us a peek of what they currently have uh, curated in the museum. And then the YWCA is here. Miriam and Hannah and Tatisha are here to talk about their legal advocate program. Um, and you definitely want to take notes about that because uh, if if you or if you know somebody uh, who needs those services, that is good information to have. And then the Emergency Food Network, our Helen is here. Um, sadly, at least for me and for many, many people in Tacoma, it is Helen's uh, last uh, last week on the job. She is retiring, so we are going to talk with her about uh, her accomplishments, the mission, vision, and what has changed, and uh, you can bet she won't be sitting still during her retirement. And then with me right now is um, a wonderful individual that I had the pleasure of welcoming to Tacoma a couple of months ago when he was brand new. Um, I'm talking about Stuart Early. You are the Chief Executive Officer of the Humane Society for Tacoma and Pierce County. Welcome back. Well, thank you, Amanda. Thank you for inviting me. Great to have you here. And oh my gosh, um, you brought with you um, an incredibly special guest. Tell us who this is. Well, this is Harvey. Uh, Harvey is a, I'm a foster failure, as we call it. A <laughs> foster um, failure. Foster failure. Uh, Harvey has a, a very sad background. His, yes. um, his owners uh, gave him a heroin overdose, and he almost didn't pull through. He was in intensive care for a month. Uh, he was in kennels, not doing very well. And one of our people uh, brought him up to me on a Saturday morning and said, this little dog needs a foster home for the weekend. And that was back in August, <laughs> so I failed as a foster and I adopted him because we, we bonded um, so well. And as you can see, he's quite chilled and relaxed. He um, is. He's a great dog. And I just, we, well, he couldn't bear to be parted from me and I couldn't bear to be parted from him. So uh, we've ended up together. <laughs> Well, you know, that, that answers one of my questions of you, you've been in the Pacific Northwest now for four months as CEO of the Humane Society. Um, and obviously this has changed since <laughs> yes. we last spoke. Um, I think, I think that you are a foster favorite. How's that? Because <laughs> I, I want more people to foster animals and, and to know when it's a right fit for them. Um, if, I think if that happened more often, we'd put you out of business. There wouldn't be any animals to adopt because we would all know. That would be great. Wouldn't it? Yeah. So what's changed since you showed up in August? Well, apart from, from Harvey, um, that's the major thing. We've also launched a number of new initiatives. And we, we do need sort of lots more homes for animals like Harvey. Uh, currently, we have about 107 dogs in the shelter, about 160 cats probably about 40, 45 other animals. And talking of fosters, we have something like 213 animals that are currently being fostered. Mm. So mainly cats, but a number of dogs as well. Mm. So yeah, a lot going on. A definite, a definite need there. So um, when we look at a dog like Harvey, um, obviously you have more plans to help more dogs like this as he just stretches out and gets comfortable over there. Um, let's talk about fostering and how, how, how that happens. And, and, you know, as I said, if I had to walk through, you know, the Humane Society and see Harvey, I would be, to use your phrase, a foster failure too. I'd be like, forget the fostering, I'm taking them home. Yeah. So, so what plans do you have to help more dogs like this? Well, the thing with, I mean, cats are um, different. Cats, they are very different. Yeah. Cats are very independent. They are much more resilient. Um, but dogs are, need that special care because they get very confused and very lost when suddenly they're away from their home yeah. um, and everything they're used to, they come into a strange environment. It's very confusing for them. It's very frightening for them. And that's, you, you get that sort of 
fight or flight thing kick in. Yes. So they've got nowhere to go. So sometimes they get very aggressive when they're in a, a, a kennel environment. So we try and work with them to Im improve their behaviours, to socialise them more, to get them adapted to being with other dogs, with other people. But that takes an awful lot of time and effort. Um, you know, we can spend sort of, you know, months trying to rehabilitate a dog. Um, mm -hmm. And so we put in an awful lot of time um, and it takes a lot of resources, but it's worth doing when you, you get those, you know, the rewards of seeing a happy animal going to a happy forever home. Absolutely. And that's what it's all about. Tell us, tell us in your experience, uh, I, I guess I would hasten to guess that you have never adopted a dog who has survived a heroin overdose before. What was it that you felt that this Harvey needed the most from you when you talk about um, ad adapting and building that trust again? I think it's, it's, it's the company. I mean, he's hardly ever away from me. I think since we're apart from sort of, you know, a, a couple of days, we're together all the time. He comes yes. to work, he's in the car. Um, it's just giving him that support initially that he knew that there was someone there for him because he, he was a little bit of a lost soul. Um, oh, yeah. When he was in the kennel, he sort of went into the corner, just stared at the corner of the kennel. He just completely closed down, which is what some dogs do. And, and that's why it was so urgent to, to get him out into a foster home. Um, but now he's, he's, he's a much happier dog. Oh. He's a much more chilled dog. Um, and he's, it, it, it's, it's great. But that's what these dogs need. They need that reassurance that someone is there for them because they've been wrenched away from you know, whatever environment they had. Um, and he's, he's clearly been beaten. You're going to go walk about, Hob? Yeah. He's clearly been beaten in the past because he's, um, if people raise their hands or um, we have people sort of suddenly sort of rush into him, he gets very excited. Mm -hmm. But, uh, sure. Back Look at him, he is just, I mean, it just it breaks my heart to think that obviously what he's gone through, yet my heart gets restored when I, you walked in this morning and here was this beautiful animal and he is, was just the love of the green room, said hello to everybody. So, um, you know, the kind of programs, you are a living example of that, Stuart, of, of you walk the talk, as we say here in America. So are there new programs that you are introducing to the Center to Help Animals? Yeah, we're doing a lot more on the vet side. We always have done a lot, but we are now moving to having uh, vets on site uh, seven days uh, a week. These are quite cool looking dudes. Yes, look um, at this, the doggles. <laughs> we, are, we are doing, we're getting, using more equipment now this is what they call um, cold laser therapy um, it really helps the animals recover from uh, uh, when they've gone through uh, operational uh, stuff on the eyes so it really sort of improves the animals we've got investing in new equipment mm -hmm. we're bringing in more bodies so it's you know, we're moving forward to the rate of knots on the veterinary side as well. Outstanding, and you have you do have some more. Pl you have plans to do more community outreach. Let's talk about that. Yeah, we currently do an awful lot of community outreach. Mm -hmm. We probably about one sixth of our total expenditure goes on helping people stay together with their animals. Um, are you going to come back up on the sofa, Harvey? <laughs> Let's keep you close. Um, we have a number of schemes to help people with their veterinary, with veterinary support, with helping animals um, be neutered. And we even have a pet food pantry which enables people to come and get food. But we need to do an awful lot more on education. So we're looking at doing more of that. I mean, on, on screen at the moment, you'll see yes. this is an x-ray of a cat that was shot with a <gasps> shotgun. Oh, my. Uh, and the leg had to be amputated. And we want to do more, especially with children, to educate them to... Be kind and <laughs> oh, shh, it's okay, Harvey. Kind and respectful to. Uh, he whatever. was saying yes to that. He's like, <laughs> yeah. I like it when you educate children to be kind and respectful. <laughs> yes, yes, he's been good so far, and then he does a little bark. <laughs> That's okay. He he wants to join the conversation. I, so ab absolutely, um, you have a we have a question here that that I I love your answer to, and I I love it because it has the roots in. 
in terms of you living in the UK and bringing a new perspective to us. And that is when we think about midterm elections that are quickly approaching here, um, what is it when you think about if you could talk with our legislators, what would you bring up to them? I think there's a number of things. Um, first and foremost, the fact that you, it's still legal to declaw a cat mm -hmm. in, in Washington state, which is, uh, it's, t it's totally barbaric. It's illegal to do that in the UK and a number of other European countries and in some states. So it, we would be taught, want to talk to legislators about, let, let's ban yes. deploying cats because it's just awful, it's horrible. It's like us having the tops of our fingers removed. Can I add docking tails to that as uh, well? Docking tails, yes. all sorts of other things And as ears well. and anything yep. to do with changing how they came out. Can we just stop that yep. practice? Absolutely. So yes. these are the things we want to talk to legislators about. All right, well, from your mouth to their ears, I'm gonna put, I'm gonna put in like just a request for the universe that they listen. <laughs> Okay. I love that. Thank you. So in these last few minutes, um, there's a, you've got a lot of, of wonderful breath of fresh air initiatives that you are bringing to us, and we love that. How is this all going to be funded, Stuart? That's a good question, mm -hmm. because um, we have an awful lot of great donors um, and people who support us, but we need to broaden yes. that support. So we're launching what we're calling our Friends Initiative mm -hmm. to try and encourage everyone across Pierce County to support us. Um, if everyone in Pierce County just gave us a couple of dollars a week or a month. A latte uh, factor. Yeah. Yeah. It would be huge. So we want to you know, try and you know, reach everyone in Pierce County and Tacoma and sort of ask them, you know, can you support us, if only for a couple of dollars a week or a month, um, because then we could do so much more for the animals. I mean. When some, we can do a lot internally with our vets, but some really technical surgery, you need to go to specialists, and that's where it costs an awful lot to get an animal treated. Just recently, we've had a couple of animals go for orthopedic surgery, which cost around sort of five, ten thousand mm. dollars a shot. So, you know, you can only fund so many of those, but with everyone's help, we could do an awful lot more and help those animals survive and right. find their forever homes. Isn't that right, Harvey? Harvey says that's right. <laughs> well, Stuart, I want to say thank you so much to you and to your team that we couldn't fit on the couch with Harvey and to all of your volunteers and your boards of directors and encourage people to go to that website and to click on the Friends of the Humane Society. And I'm sure you make it very easy by direct deposit or just automatic withdrawal uh, to um, give to our little four-legged friends. Thank you for being here again. I love visiting with you. Uh, I want to say happy holidays to you Thank and you. yours as you're headed back over the pond, we say. And uh, I want you back here in the new year because I want to check in on Harvey and I also want to hear about uh, uh, what's happening uh, at the Humane Society and uh, some new animals that we get to enjoy as well. Okay, well, thank you for having me. You're more than welcome. When we come back after just a little bit of musical chairs, we'll have Helen McGovern Pallant here to talk about her tenure at the Emergency Food Network. You don't want to miss that. We'll be right back.